It's Tuesday, April 9th, 2013. This is the 404 Show on CNET. I'm Jeff Bacalar. I'm Justin Yu. I'm Ariel Nunez. What's up, everybody? Hey. Hey. Hey there. Thanks for tuning in. Got some stuff to talk to you about today. And uh, we'll get to some voicemails as well. Mm-hmm. Hope everyone's enjoying uh, the uh, the week. Beautiful weather here in New York City. It is. Went, weird. went from like 50 degrees to 80 degrees in 24 hours. Yeah. <laughs> so we're all going to be sick very soon. Have a lot to look forward to. <laughs> Quick little programming note. Today it's going to happen, I promise. Today it's here. The day is here. We're going to release the uh, Ken Levine interview. Finally. Finally. Fa- Finally. <laughs> you know, I had to go through a few cuts, had to go through a few edits. Yeah. A few ups and downs, highs and lows, a few what have you sprinkled in. Mm-hmm. Can't rush a masterpiece. Can't rush a. Ma- Ooh, thank you. <laughs> Can't rush a masterpiece. So uh, I'm very excited because there's a lot of cool stuff in there, and I think there's a lot of stuff that, uh, you know, Ken's never really talked about in public before. So I'm excited to, to have that. Okay. Um, and we're just gonna—I'm just gonna release the podcast version, just the audio version today. Um, you know, it was on Skype, so the video isn't awesome by any stretch. We'll do the—we'll uh, do the audio-only version, and that'll show up in your uh, in your iTunes feed later today. Or you can probably go to the 404. Oh no, cnet.com/slash the 404 and grab and it there too. It there. Yeah, download it there too. It'll cool. be in our RSS feed and all that good stuff. Wait. So, uh, so thanks again to everyone involved with that, and uh, finally we could put that up. Yeah, I'm excited. All right. Awesome. What else we got? God, I wish we had waited to listen to that song until after the show. Why is that? that really <laughs> bummed me out. Yeah, I feel I like know. I'm in a bad mood Chase now after <laughs> listening to that. Well, what song it are you talking about? It did the opposite of the intended effect. Uh, yeah. We just listened to a new LL Cool J song that people are really pissed about, and I understand why. Yeah. It's a collaboration with this country artist named Brad Paisley. You guys ever heard of that guy never. before? I never. I mean, I don't really follow country music charts. But, I couldn't name I six country artists. Anyway, it's called Accidental Racist, and it's kind of mending 150 years <laughs> plus of racial tension between North and Southern white men. In and, one and awful country hip-hop collaboration. So, you heard it here first. Racism is over, and you it's have done. two guys to thank for it. Why is it now? Why is the song called The Accidental Racist? It's sort of talking... Well, okay, the, so the song opens up with Brad Paisley talking about wearing a Confederate flag t-shirt into a Starbucks. Right, and then getting judged for that because people assume that he's racist because he's right. supporting the South. Just like someone would, I don't know, if you wore a swastika right. on your arm, <laughs> right. you think you're a freaking neo-Nazi yeah. bigot scumbag. But the point is that he's trying to struggle between having Southern pride as a white man, and he says as a white man. <laughs> There's no pride. And then, you know, be- kind of using that against history, which has typically associated Southern people with What a, what a poor guy. You, he slavery. has such a hard time. I know. You want to be <laughs> proud for being the South? There's plenty of ways to express that, aside from wearing a shirt with the Confederate flag. Right. The yeah. Confederate flag, regardless of what you personally cherish it as, right. it has become a symbol context. for basically preserving slavery. Right? right? Like, I mean, <laughs> let's really cut through the crap yeah. right here. Right? Yeah. I mean, it's fine. It's not even, like, good-looking either. It's not even, like, a good-looking thing. Yeah. It's, you know, it just stands for something that America, for the most part, right. is uh, embarrassed about. <laughs> right? Am, yeah, I, yeah, am, I, am I crazy here? Yeah, it's 2013, man. Yeah. It's 20 freaking 13. Yeah, totally. I feel like Confederate flags got bad PR, too, after. Because now they're featured in, like, all these political cartoons and, like, yeah. bad t-shirts. Or, like, those big Johnson t-shirts. <laughs> like, the guy's always wearing a Confederate flag in look, the graphic for those. And, and look, I, the, the, the logo, the flag, was not designed to symbolize slavery. Like, it wasn't designed to symbolize hate or mm-hmm. anything like that but it's just but over the course slaves. of hundreds of years it's become associated <laughs> yeah, with it so you it. move on beyond it just like we don't say certain words anymore mm-hmm. what words i don't know <laughs> to- <laughs> toothless for example <laughs> toothless <laughs> you know? but ll cool j comes in at the end with i, I mean i wish you want to play it no, just, just go just go online. No, and no, 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 no. Now we to. have to because we've been talking about it too much. Just play the one part right before LL's part <laughs> comes in. Okay. Because your ears will will deceive you. Uh-huh. It, you are actually hearing this. This is like a real LL Cool J. Thing. We do. He's he, been on. He's been on the show before. Yeah. He's been uh, with us at CES. And he he's has. Been a duet with 
Brian Tong, which I really like. <laughs> you want to call that a duet? <laughs> I want to you match call that, that up with accidental races. <laughs> right. I think that's be- better maybe than what we got right here. Just play it for a few seconds. Okay. I'll warning, warning, warning. This is a cringeworthy warning. Yeah, yeah. We, got, we got an ad coming up here, so we'll, we'll listen to it in about it's, like 15 seconds. It's, it's something that you just can't. Get behind. You can't unhear this. But I so I don't want. I just don't though. want. I don't want people to, to call in and complain and say, "Oh, you ruined my life." I heard that song. You know, yeah. it changed my whole perspective on shit. <laughs> you know, you got. You just. I'm sorry. This is a spoiler, cringe-worthy warning. Yeah. All right. Can we play this now? Uh, it's having trouble loading. It's up. having trouble loading. You're kidding me. We're <laughs> not gonna have this freaking song now for we people. Have to. Oh, it's be- It's it's just it's weird. No. No. Still nothing. Hold had, on. had no problem playing it 15 <laughs> seconds ago. Yeah. Wait, so uh, so, why, bad, so explain to me how this collaboration like came to be. Do you know? I have no idea. Like, did this guy, this Paisley guy, reached out to LL Cool J, and I was like, "Yeah, I can really, uh, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, I think I can speak on behalf of every African American on <laughs> yeah. Earth, and just yeah. and just call, you know, let bygones be bygones, right, right. <laughs> and just sort Tell of, wa- you know, wipe away the debt <laughs> here. Yeah. You know, we'll just." Clean. Start from a clean slate here. Wow! It just got taken down. That's no crazy. No way! You're full of it. This is the same. Okay, look. You could switch to this. This was the Fox News website that I just played it on, like 15 seconds ago. How did they cover it? Was it like finally? <laughs> and yeah. they just took it down. Yeah. So find it again. All right. I just you have to you just have to have that in consideration because it's very cringeworthy. Yeah, it's really bad. All right. So play it from from that part we talked about. Okay. So this is Brad Paisley, and then it'll lead into the LL Cool J verse. Okay. <laughs> Southern blame. No one's ever. Okay, you could hear the DJ scratching. <laughs> yeah. Dear Mr. White Man, I wish you understood what the world is really like when you're living in the hood. Just because my pants are sagging doesn't mean I'm up to no good. What the? You should try to get to know me. I really wish you would. <laughs> now my chance to go. <laughs> you... still my son. Try and keep a straight face. I, I can hear him licking his south. lips in <laughs> <through> the microphone. <laughs> Yeah, that's the total. <laughs> that's the total LL. I guess we're both guilty of judging the cover, not the book. I'd love to buy you a beer, conversate and clear the air, but I see that red flag and I think you wish I wasn't here. Alright, that's enough. Cut uh, it. Cut it. If, if, if you, if that's something that you. You, there's no one on earth who thinks that that's a good song, right? The best is at the end when he gives daps to uh, Robert E. Lee. He's like, Robert E. Lee, what's <laughs> up? Robert E. Lee! <laughs> Lincoln! Oh man. oh, man. What's up, President Lincoln? That's sad. Wow. Pretty that should wow. be a Weird Al. Wow. <laughs> yeah. right? How is that not? You hear that? Else? You hear that? And you're like, this leaked out from some sort of comedy parody, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. That's no one in the South is proud of that. What is that? Yeah. What is that? Whew. Okay. Oh, get that out. Just oh, shake it out. Man. Just shake it out. I know I'm sorry. <clears throat> you, you can't unhear that, what mm. you just heard. You mm. cannot unhear what you just heard. I feel like I need a shower or something. I need to freaking take a, you know, ice pick to my <laughs> eardrum. <laughs> yeah. That's what I need to do. Oh, G- God. It hurts me. Jeebus. Uh, all right. Let's let's totally switch gears and, and never speak of this ever again. <laughs> um... Tell us, uh, oh, this is, okay, so what you do, I always consider what you do for Cena a very sexy, but, very sexy thing. But, okay. But, what but, Me but, or us? But, what you do. Okay. The way you review those printers. Oh, yeah. Super yeah. sexy. Yeah. Very, I very mean, you're sensual. sitting there in the lab, mm-hmm. you're taking your shirt off sometimes because yep. it gets real <laughs> hot. You want there. ink on the shirt. You yeah. want ink on the uh, shirt. Uh, so, so, so tell us about this inkjet printer story. So I don't get to talk about printers that much on the show. You don't. But when I get the opportunity, I take it. Hell yeah. <laughs> and this is one of the coolest things I've ever seen, uh, using an inkjet printer. This is basically an, a very cool inkjet printer hack by a guy named Lucian Langdon. And he's a, uh, he's a student over at eCal. And he made an inkjet printer act, hack that uses an Arduino Uno computer okay. we've seen those before so for right? for the normal people what is that that's basically like a <laughs> tiny self-contained computer like a raspberry pi right exactly okay. 
right? <laughs> so uh, he hooked up this Ardu- Arduino Uno computer yeah. to an optical sensor. Maybe you can put this image up here. It'll help me explain it better. An optical sensor and then a butane propane torch. And he basically uses those three components to burn images into different surfaces. Those surfaces wow. include wood, walls, plastic, and fabric. And he does this all with a butane torch, and he calls it the fire rider. This is kind of mm, like what crazy. you what people would do with WD forty. Yeah, you, you make that blowtorch, and you can write. You could write with that, right? Mm. Except what? this, you're not going to burn down your house with it. Right? Yeah, there's that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's actually a video as well that we can watch um, and then explain at the same time. So basically, he uses this machine that's on wheels, and then he burns images using those three components on a horizontal axis, pixel by pixel. So this computer is attached to the inkjet, which tells it where to go. And then you use this contraption onto a wall and kind of move it yourself horizontally to lay down the image. It's pretty sick. It's really cool. So I don't know, like... How we're going to see this in application later on? I'm thinking graffiti. That'd be really well, cool. Well, I was just going to say, because I know there are graffiti guys who do that with paint. They, right. like, light the paint on fire. Mm-hmm. What, what, but why? Is it because it's, like, harder to take off? Well, it's permanent, yeah. Yeah, but spray paint's pretty permanent. I That's mean, not. unless you paint you over it. that off. Yeah? Yeah. But this is, you know, ingraining it into the surface itself. This is almost like tattooing a wall. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. It's essentially what you're doing here. This is really cool. It doesn't take... A little bit of time, either. I mean, this guy is laying it down. What's crazy? It's layer. like it, it's like a dot matrix printer too, because yeah. it it sort of goes horizontally back and forth. Right. Exactly. Yeah. But it's it's a uh, the scale is one to one too. So I mean, it's look how detailed this uh, portrait is. That yeah. You're painting. It's pretty sick. It's really cool. Mm. Yeah. We'll we'll link to the to the full video in the show notes, and you can watch this whole thing. Yeah. Happen before your eyes. It's pretty gnarly. He's claiming that it won't actually light anything on fire, even if you press this onto like a fabric surface. I'm pretty Which sure it would light I mean, on. I mean, it's a torch. Yeah, it's, it's a, a blow torch. Torch. It's burning at over 2,000 degrees, too, <laughs> oh, according is, to him. Which, if you're a scientist, you know is too hot for fire. Yeah, but this guy knows what he's doing, yeah. so I would trust him. Yeah, I like it. I want to go out with this guy. <laughs> you know, at night, and like, yeah, go, get, go get, do a bunch of graffiti with him. Get nasty with yeah. this guy. I don't know, man. And it's not, you know, no one knows what you're doing either because it's only like you got a huge blowtorch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? No one ever stops someone carrying fire. No, right? that never happens. All right, good for him. Real fire. Real fire. I respect it, dude. Cool. Good job. Fire it looks rider. Really cool. Check it out. Lucian Langdon. Yeah. Good job, bro. Countdown to two weeks before Banksy ruins this with some stupid political message. <laughs> <laughs> I think you really like Banksy. Yeah, I love him. I think you what like an artist. Him. Yeah. Uh, all right. <laughs> Speaking of the uh, the gulch, what do we were gonna get to this yesterday and we ran out of time. Mm-hmm. Just talking about gangsters and the internet. What do gangsters do <laughs> on the internet? Is there like a mafia on the internet? Is yeah, that what you're there talking is. about? This is basically tracking gang activity internationally and then comparing that to how American gangsters use the internet. Mm. What we're calling the gangster net. Apparently, <laughs> yeah. Not sure that's the one to do, but yeah. okay. Uh, 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 surprisingly, this is a Google funded study. So uh, I'd never heard of this before, but Google Ideas. That's basically a think tank that uh, Google New York puts on, and they just fund a bunch of really cool projects. And uh, one of these projects, uh, they recently funded a study by two researchers that sort of look at the rise of uh, internet use amongst gangsters and gang activity. And uh, they interviewed 600 people across the country to see how uh, they compare to their international counterparts. And I'd love to see how those uh, interviews go. Because I'm imagining like a Dave Chappelle, you know that like white narrator from Dave Chappelle? <laughs> yeah. Like asking people in the hood how they use the internet. Right. <laughs> um, anyway, so uh, one of the responders said, we don't talk about it because the police is on there. <laughs> Which is like the <laughs> obvious thing. Like, yeah. And that's Duh. the end of the survey right yeah. there. Yeah. And that should be read in that old British white guy voice from Dave from the Chappelle show, right? <laughs> We don't talk about it. We don't talk about it <laughs> because the police is on there. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, he, here's the breakdown. 46% of the gang members polled, uh, they reported posting gang-related videos online. And, and those are like beat-down videos to beat people into the gang. That's terrible. Beat-out videos. Beat doesn't out sound beat. as nasty yeah. as <laughs> so you'd think. That's for? to beat you out of a gang. <laughs> it's like, well, guys, here has a, here's how it works. And there's the beat-off videos as well, which are totally different. <laughs> to get into our gang, we got to beat the crap out of you. 
If we ever deem it necessary to remove you from the gang, we will beat you out of the gang as yeah. well. <laughs> At least they're consistent. Um, and then 56% per, uh, reported watching gang-related videos online, which I assume to be all World Star fight compilation videos. <laughs> right. Have you seen those, by the way? They put oh, them out so every bad. month. Scum of the Earth? And they're like the best of fight videos uploaded to World Star, and it's mm -hmm. like five of minutes earth. of the craziest scum of the earth. fights you've ever seen. Right, just like mm -hmm. scum of the earth. For whatever reason, they got into the fights. You've seen them, right? Yeah. It's pretty They're upsetting. Brutal. Yeah, pretty brutal. It's pretty pretty like middle school you find kids. it like ultra upsetting like I Yeah, do. I can't watch that stuff. Right? It's yeah. hard to watch. Yeah. It really is. Like, the, it makes you really think there's just no hope. I mean, there's yeah. some videos where it looks like like that guy might have died, man. Yeah. That's yeah. pretty a pretty bad knockout. Yeah. How come I wonder why Tosh isn't doing these videos too like oh, you see that guy he died right yeah yeah, yeah. And then there's always some fool at the end that like pops into the video and he's just like yeah well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah like always done i'm that. putting this on youtube yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> so good <sighs> um anyway so 11 percent of the gang affiliated responders said they claim to use the internet for organizing activities despite knowing that cops are on there it's probably not the smartest. Use yeah. of well, they time. do it in real life, and cops are in real life too. So, what's right. to stop them from doing it online? Right, exactly. And then, okay, so fast forward to the end of the study. They, they sort of realized that organized gangs abroad in Asia and uh, European countries, like Russia, for example, they use gang, uh, they use the internet for distributing and collecting members. Mm -hmm. um, so then they also use that for uh, payroll as well. Apparently, they Halo. distribute stuff using Bitcoin abroad, too, which is really cool. Hmm. That's um, interesting. But that's a big contrast with the uh, American gangsters that uh, apparently aren't using the Internet nearly as much. And I'm assuming that's because the organized gangsters abroad probably have access to the Internet, whereas a lot of the gangsters here do so in, like, poorer parts of the country. And so maybe they can't afford to use the internet. I, I, I don't know about that. I don't know. That's a weird, that's a strange They gotta thing like go to, to Starbucks to use their free Wi-Fi. I guess, yeah, I don't organize. know. Organize. Yeah, you can't organize. bang at Starbucks. <laughs> I'm not gonna <laughs> bang, bang not at gangster. Yeah, that is so anti-gangster. <laughs> yeah. All right, thanks for that report, Justin <laughs> You Appreciate gangster that, net. buddy. Gangster net. We, uh, we're gonna take a break when we get back. Voicemails, emails, and a lot of interaction with you, the fine 404 listening public. Yep. All this on the other side of the break. Stick around and we'll be right back. Hit refresh. Hit refresh. Ray. Okay. Just watch. Here. W W W. Got it. I'll check her face fault to see her previous bing bangs. Oh no, you've not signed up with friend face, have you? You can go to the slap.com later and look at my page. But I friended them all so we could stay in touch. I just got invited to make out with Shauna. See? His high school girlfriend goes to college there. Not mean that he's Oh, well, we can check his browser history. Hmm. You think they're real? Welcome to Vampirama.com. Tonight, a TVBN Vampire Crisis exclusive. They have a website, too? Oh, there's websites, there's community groups. Apparently, he likes bingo. Look up the pronunciation for schedule on the internet. Schedule. She says to look up Fred is dead. Here it is, just posted an hour ago. Oh, click on it. It was taken about a month ago. That ball was out? That ball! Hi. Wow, that speech! Who knows if Weevil, or the tipster for that matter, was telling the truth. We took photos of you and sold them to a garbage fetish website. Toll, prima, was für ein Mullieber. Your assignment is Dustin Zimmer. Tech billionaire. Let's see. Uncensored jump rope chance. Oh, there's a whole thread labeled Lisa Sampson. Sit down. We're going to post a response on the site. What site? Lemon no. Lemon Duck. Yeah, we got to post a response to someone. How do I find me? Computer. Jenna. Tell me the name of the state and site. LAGuysAndDolls.com. Oh, boy. Oh. Oh, my God. The first girl I found was amazing, beautiful, smart. Good Lord. 
Who would think? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's try shaunashower.com. Receipt for a website, whoisyourmama.org. I'm going on to richardcastle.net. What's Neville saying on Nevelocity? Um, try malibupuddinggirls.com. Is your face hyphenated? Welcome back to the 404 show. Mm. I'm always in the mood for a freaking compilation. Supercut. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Dig that. That was a supercut of TV's best fake websites. Uh, but <laughs> I'm finding recently there's like, uh, there's just whatever's going on on the internet, writers of TV shows will just pop it in right away. Yeah. And because there's a delay in the time it takes to write a show, produce it, and getting to air, mm -hmm. sometimes it's you know a couple months, sometimes it's a month, whatever it is. It just always feels weird because it's never, regardless, it's always after the fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're also getting to a point where there should never be a TV show or a movie where, without a scene, where they the character uses the internet. It's right? true. I mean, like, yeah, if it's set it in a first world country, it should they all, should be on the internet at least for five minutes yeah, during that. Program. Absolutely. Well, it started with the phones. Like everyone's got a phone now, right? And mm -hmm. phones play a huge role in narrative. Like, look at Girls. Yeah. The show Girls without phones, that there's no show mm -hmm. there. That's like a really big, you know, uh, uh, plot device. Right, in those, yeah. In, the, in that program. I like that app that they made for that episode. Uh, in the last season, did you watch that one? Oh, the guy who was just like, "Yeah, I made an app. And, uh, yeah, now I'm a millionaire." Yeah, so <laughs> his, like his app idea was really cool, and I wonder if they could actually do this in real life. In the show, girls is a character that makes an app. Uh, Charlie, that right? Yeah, Charlie. He's, a, he's he doesn't, out. Yeah, he doesn't. He's out want, of the show. He's out of the show now. Yeah. But basically, he breaks up with a girl, and he doesn't want to call her again. So to keep him from doing that, he develops this app where you give the telephone company the phone number you don't want to call. And, and then if yeah. you do want to call it, they'll charge you to make the call. Right. Oh. Do you think that would work? It's like a swear jar. I, yeah. It might work. That would yeah. be really cool. Or I think a better idea would maybe to be uh, like if you wanted to not call someone and you give that phone number to the company, the app, whatever. And then they distribute codes to like five of your friends. Right. And then you have to get the code from each of them yeah. in order to end up making the call. What Same about idea. just like an app? I'm sure there is one. What about an app that just won't let you dial a certain number? Yeah. You know? Unless you want to. Unless you shake it for four and a half <laughs> minutes. <laughs> yeah. That's what you have to do to open that up. Uh, all right. Let's get to some emails. Yeah. We got a bunch. Let's uh, alternate here. Mm. Let's go with Alf first. I'm going to do Alf. Talked a lot about Alf yesterday. I love cats. <laughs> 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 there was a guy doing the Alf voice we were playing after the show yesterday. That was, yeah. That was really good. Anyway, you do it well because you're from Brooklyn. Well, I, I was mean, born so there. You were born yeah, there. Yeah. I, I guess, because <laughs> Alf <laughs> is an alien from Brooklyn. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is from uh, Andy from Astoria, which I'm assuming is Queens, which is just a little a town over. Hey, guys. Mm -hmm. I've been a huge fan since the BW, which is now we're calling before <laughs> Wilson. <laughs> right. And even BJ, which is before uh, Justin. Oh, <laughs> BJ, huh? <laughs> <laughs> In regards to the last episode of Alf where he gets kidnapped by the Air Force, don't get too bummed out. Alf doesn't die. In 1996, oh. there was a project called Alf TV Movie in which he gets out of his predicament <laughs> alive. I have vague memories of this, but I do remember it being a sequel to the show. Anyway, I love the show. BJ, BW, and beyond. Thanks, Andy. <laughs> You're funny. That's really cool. Uh, all right, so you can sleep easy at night. Alf mm -hmm. is most certainly alive and well, living the rest of his days out yeah. in Bermuda. <laughs> um, next uh, email. Uh, okay, so I'm going to skip down here. Okay. Because, um, you know, we've been asking listeners to call in and let us know the weird places that they listen to the show. And we got one from Megan that I wanted to read off. This one's really funny. She says, hi, guys. You want to know some strange places where we listen to your podcast? Well... Perhaps you would rather not hear this one, but you asked for it. I listened to the podcast while pumping breast milk in the mother's room at my office. Oh, my God. And I'm pretty <laughs> sure there have been times where people have been wondering and walking by, wondering why there's laughter coming from my mother's room. No, the, the mother's, mother's room. room. Thanks for keeping this tired new mother of twins up on her technology news, as well as awake and entertained during my breaks. Thanks for the <laughs> email, Megan. I've never heard of a mother's room, and I hate to sound insensitive. Yeah. 
I did not know of such a thing. Yeah, I didn't did know you know either. about? No, I did you not. Know, do we have nope. a mother's room here at CBS? I think it's Mark's office. <laughs> <laughs> right? I think there are people in there right now pumping breast milk. <laughs> right, right. I also didn't realize there that some mothers be. tend to fall asleep while they're pumping. Too. Really? Is uh-huh. it like a, a, it's a physically and emotionally draining process? I can imagine uh, it. Draining. All right. Man. <laughs> I can imagine just being I didn't there, sitting there, and it's kind of like a massage. I don't know. I can see it being a little tired. Megan, let us know. Does it does it make you want to pass out? And two. Wow. It's not like it's taking Twins. blood out of you. Yeah. Is it? Is this sustenance? I don't. I don't <laughs> no. know. I don't know. Um. Mother's anyway, room. very interesting. Mother's room. Didn't know that. Is there a father's room? I feel like it should be two. <laughs> father's room. The guy just <laughs> goes there? in there and cries. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens in the father's room. <laughs> <laughs> just cries his eyes out. <laughs> <laughs> I've made a terrible mistake. <laughs> That's uh. the father's room. <laughs> Coming to an office near you. Um, all right, <laughs> fair enough, man. That's a, that's a very interesting story yeah. here. Uh, all right, let's go to the headphones thing. I want to. We this guy had a headphones question for a while, and we never mm-hmm. answered him. This is Grand Rapids from Chris. I listen to music while working every day. I wear earbuds to make it less obvious that I'm listening to music. Mm. However, after an hour or so, my ears start to hurt. Can you recommend a good pair of very comfortable earbuds? Mm. Thanks, and I love the show. <laughs> is it a po- is it a possibility that he's using buds that are too big? Could be the, yeah. the little plastic if they rubber start attachments. Hurting him after a while, then yeah, maybe he needs to swap sizes if he doesn't want to buy a whole new earphone. But if he wants to get a new one, Ariel and I actually shot a video for an editor's choice winner winning headphone oh, yeah. that will be posted, I believe, today. Hey, what are what are they? But they're the V Moto Remix Remote headphones. The one that I'm using. Yeah, no. they're the ones that you're using. They're and not you know editor's what? choice. They're not? They're not. Good thing you're not an editor anymore. <laughs> um, you don't like them? I, 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 I know use them without like the remote. Okay. It's not, well, that's not why. I don't know. They they sound good. They do sound good. I'm not going to take sound that away. Great. And I'm not trying to challenge your editorial No, but I mean, look, headphone choices are always subjective. Right. If your ear size is a little bit different, then maybe these won't fit you. But they're the closest to a, a universal fit as I could find. Yeah. How come you don't like them? They do feel they are comfortable as hell. I'll tell you that. Okay. Um. I don't know. I, I'm spoiled. I went from those ten vis, those ultimate. Yeah. Years. But there's also three hundred and fifty dollar difference between separating the two. The two yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. if you want to spend eighty bucks and you're the on price a budget, is right. Yeah. Buy the V Motor Remix remote headphones. They have the integrated remote and microphone and all that stuff. Sound great. They come with uh, ear pieces, so it sounds like this guy's going to the gym. They have like these uh, ear stabilizers. No, I think it's just uh, at the office. He didn't say anything about that? No, nope, while no, he's working, I'm, I'm he's talking things. about it. Um, well, anyway, they have these stabilizer things so that if they keep falling out of your ears, you can put them on, and then it'll cool. kind of I have that problem. Keep it there. Yeah. yeah. Earbuds always fall out of my ears. Yeah? Just yeah, when you're walking yeah, yeah. around, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah. So these will help with that. 80 bucks. And they also remote. have a ridiculous selection of sizes for those rubber pieces. Six. They're yeah, six. they come with oh, wow. six that's different m- that's sizes. That's like twice the usual, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, sweet. Thanks for the uh, email, Chris. Hopefully that advice helps you. I want to get to Luke from the UK. How dare you not say me. I, well, yeah. <laughs> no, no, I'm sorry. You're full of crap. You, you made the wrong decision. There. Um, <laughs> this is from Luke from the UK, who I now hate because okay. he wrote my name G-E-O-F-F. <laughs> what the hell, dude? You're not French? We're about to uh, help answer your question here. You call me G-Off? <laughs> yeah. Man, oh man. Just after I got finished talking about how much I love your freaking country. Anyway, I just wanted to add something to the discussion regarding a high-end gaming PC versus a next-gen console. Depending on the amount of games you buy per year, surely a service like Steam would win over buying console games as you pay 35 to 45 pounds for a AAA console, which is, you know, like 60 bucks. Mm-hmm. Um, for a AAA console game and much less for a game on Steam. Now, let's, let's sort of separate some of the, the, the information here. Steam, yes, you are more likely to get discounted prices for games on Steam, but not new releases. I don't want people to think they can go out right now and get Bioshock Infinite for, you know, 20 bucks or whatever it is. It's, they, for the most part, the sales come after the fact. Uh, and then he goes, plus when I bought Bioshock <laughs> Bioshock Intimate, he wrote right here, uh-huh. which we need to now do something <laughs> with. <laughs> Can we get, like, a Bioshock <laughs> Intimate <laughs> meme going on right now? Because he wrote Bioshock Intimate. He uh, he said once he bought that, he got three free games. So, yeah, there are incentives on Steam. <laughs> Wouldn't the savings on games over the years make up for the extra you would spend on a high-end gaming PC? Uh-huh. Uh, all right, so 
I guess he's not making a terrible rationalization here. Also for the sense that if you're buying a PC, your PC is going to have a lot more uses that would be able to do mostly what a console could do anyway. Like you can watch Hulu, you can watch Netflix, you can watch all these other things that your console is just catching up yeah. and doing. Huh. So there's really nothing that you will be able to do on the Xbox that you can't do on the PC when it's all said and done. We're going to get into a much bigger conversation with this as the as the consoles come out and stuff like that. And we mm. have and we have people on here who can speak to this sort of stuff. Speaking of which, speaking of which, Mark Lasea is going to be here tomorrow and I think every Wednesday from now on talking about games with you. So you've yeah. been wishing for a buddy to talk games with. Yeah, and I don't want to like commit to every week because I feel like he's just not going to be able to no? do it. No, one week but, then. Well, either way, he's going to start tomorrow and we're going to see what we can do. Mm. Kind of like an, almost like a pregame throwback, a little reunion here. We're going to see what we can do with that because it's been too long and we, you know, there needs to be a lot more game stuff here, so. You mean my mm hmm Yeah, and, you're... And <laughs> uh, you're, aren't enough to you're, fulfill your conversation? And you're obligatory, like, mm. now, what is that again? Wait. <laughs> you know, like, they're just not cutting it. <laughs> they're just not cutting it, dude. Yeah, yeah. All right, so uh, look forward to that. Uh, it's a long time coming, but we're excited to have Mark come back on the program. <laughs> Bioshock somewhat, Intimate. I want to see those Photoshop intimate. covers. Yeah, let's see that. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Maybe it should be that, like a maybe, romance novel style Maybe that's cover. how we're going to give away the, the prize packs. You should do that. What do you think? Yeah. Bioshock Intimate. <laughs> I'm, I'm down, man. Do a clever Photoshop mock-up, whatever the hell it is. We've got three Bioshock prize packs to give away, featuring a limited edition uh, figurine of mm. one of the characters from the game, the Boys of Silence. This is like, you can't, these are limited edition. These are worth money. You can't find these anywhere else. Plus, you get a poster, some pins, and, and stickers. Cool. So, uh, we'll announce that again tomorrow. But, yeah, that's how I want to do the giveaway. So do that. Bioshock Intimate. It sounds like a brand of condoms or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah for sure. <laughs> Getting me the new Bioshock Intimate. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> you'll, you'll Bioshock her socks off <laughs> yeah. or something like that. Uh, all right, rock and roll. Let's get to some voicemails. It's calls from the public time. Oh, we had one go. more uh, email, by the way, from a guy, A. Gutierrez. Oh, he actually okay. works at Radio Shack. And he says that sometimes if he misses episodes that he can't listen to by himself on his commute, that he plays the 404 in the Radio Shack store for the customers. Oh, really? Do. Oh, that's <laughs> really so, neat. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy that Ethernet cable, you guys. <laughs> yeah. Or whatever else you buy at Radio Shack now. <laughs> Enjoy that little transistor. Yeah. <laughs> along with some 404. Hopefully people just stay in the store. Yeah. Buy, continue to buy stuff. Yeah. There's a sale on soldering iron. And <laughs> listen to the show. Yeah. All right. Time for calls from the public. Time to show the love. Call me. 866 404 CNET. 404. Call from the public. All right. Calls from the public time. We are just having all kinds of difficulties <laughs> today. Uh, all right. I want to get uh, to the first call. We got three of them to get through today. Let's hear it. Hey, guys. Love the show. It's Austin, Texas from Joel. Jeff, yesterday you were saying that you're not sure what the advantage of buying a console is over hooking a, a computer up to your TV. Uh, I think it's because mostly what I use my 360 for is the same video and uh, YouTube and stuff. And every once in a while, maybe once a year, I'll play a game when a big title like Bioshock Infinite comes out. And I like the fact that it's optimized. I don't have to worry about if my graphics card will run it. I don't have to go out and spend $500 on a new graphics card or turn down the graphics. And yeah, sure, it might not look as good, but I know I can plug it in and I can play it, and it's going to work fine. I mean, I think the the takeaway here is that there are people like our buddy who just left the message that will need that experience. I also think there's a sizable chunk of people who want something bigger and better. So, again, we'll, we'll get into this conversation more. Thank you for the call, sir. Uh, we want to hear about people's graveyard shifts, right? There's a, here's our buddy who works at the hotel. Hey, guys. John from Lincoln again. Um, Jeff, after my voice, I asked about graveyard shifts. Uh, I figured I'd call back and to let you know what's up. Um, we're going to graveyard shift at the hotel. It's pretty chill, man. It's pretty quiet for the most part. Um, I live in a college town. We have a decent football team here, the Huskers. Um, so that's when it gets pretty busy. People will come in pretty early in the morning, late at night, been drinking or they're continuing to drink you know sometimes we'll offer up a shot or two which is pretty nice i'm not gonna <laughs> lie that's pretty that's probably the funnest part of my night but so i let you guys know filling in on the graveyard shift at a hotel here in 
the Midwest. Take care. Keep it up. Bye. Wow. I always, I, I, I wonder, he's got to be holding back, right? What do you There's mean? definitely a story that he's, like, psyched about that he's not telling us. <laughs> yeah. You know? Got to be. This one time, there was, like, a weird convention in town. Mm-hmm. And they're all wasted. And they're like, dude, come up and party with us. <laughs> He's just creating this guy's narrative. Yeah. <laughs> right? Something, something's got to happen like that, I bet. All right. We got to figure out whether or not this story, whether or not this situation for this next call mm-hmm. is legit. Okay. Okay? It's about piracy. It's about music. Let's see if this is legit. Hey, 404. This is somewhere from somebody. Uh, I got a question <laughs> for you guys about ethics of piracy and stuff like that. So say uh, you're a huge fan of this band, right? And um, they're coming out with a new record, and you pre-order their huge bundle. has like a T-shirt, all this other stuff, and the CD, mm-hmm. right? And it comes out in a month. So you, you're excited for it and all that. You pre-order it, and then the album leaks online. And it's available, and you really want to listen to it. Should you ethically be able to download that album for free, considering you already paid for it, especially since you paid for the deluxe package? I'm just curious about your guys' opinion. If you've already paid for it, shouldn't you get it for free? All right, thanks. Bye. Well, okay. You already paid for it. Should you get it for free? That's that's not what he means. Yeah. He's saying, you've already paid for it. The thing leaks out online. Are you entitled to that is what he means. If you're going to get it anyway, yeah. So you think he, this guy mm-hmm. in his situation here, mm-hmm. and I put <laughs> quotes in the airs when I say that. Right. You're, you agree that you he's entitled to download what is technically illegal. It's illegal. There's no if ands, or buts about it, what he's doing. I'm with you. I think it's okay. But why would he even want to do that? Because he's why saying he he's going to get access to it, like, you know, that many weeks ahead of time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, as long as he doesn't... I mean, we're not... We're not and again, I don't want this to come off as like we are endorsing your downloading of this thing early right. it's still technically illegal and you shouldn't do it but in this magical universe where we can talk about this stuff mm-hmm. i think it's okay yeah i think so too. yeah mm-hmm. especially if you hold your pre-order and you don't cancel your pre-order yeah you know if you already paid it's done with and he bought the deluxe version so he gets He's even more cool than the regular one what do you You're think good. man you yeah. think it's okay is this not even a debate I feel like I can't tell anybody not to pirate anything because that'd make me a hypocrite. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like I can't say, like, no, don't do that. But we're not talking about no, that. We're, ta- we're talking we're about speaking the, in generalities right. here. And we're not talking about personal experiences. Right. We're talking about uh, a, a, a specific situation and right. declaring it unethical or ethical. 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 I got a situation. Okay. So what if you have an album on vinyl? And you don't have a way to rip it to into your iTunes, mm. and you just download it. Is that okay? I think that falls more into the questionable category. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. I mean, be- you have the music. You you gave them your money for the music. You know what I mean? Yeah. Here's why I I I find that to be problematic. Mm-hmm. If you if you have a DVD of a movie, right. And you go, all right, you know what? I want, uh, I want to download the Blu-ray of this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you go and download a Blu-ray off whatever. Yeah, that's different, though, because the quality is better. Well, the quality would be different from the vinyl that, to the yeah, digital that is true. as well. Yeah. Right. Unless you bought it on Amazon, which now <laughs> I knew lets you, bring you that up. Yeah. Yeah. download it for free, right? Yeah. I mean, that's kind of the same thing. If, if bands are willing to put their music on Amazon, then they probably feel like it's okay, too. Yeah. Just got to check. I don't know. I don't know. You should send an email to the band in question and ask if it's okay. Yeah. And you'll get explicit consent. Yeah, that's true. It's I th- chat room. Sa- chat room is with us on the first one mm-hmm. and thinks it's a it's it's illegal. It's a no no. I could see that. Yeah. I could see that. I uh, it's tough, man. Yeah. These, these are these very gray area, you know, sort of mm-hmm. situations. But um, there but, is albums with that I have bought multiple times on either on vinyl, CD, tape. Mm-hmm. And then I have lost all of them, or given them away, or traded. Right. And I want the music again. Yeah. And I'll get it somehow. Yeah. You know. No, for sure. Like whether it's a friend giving me digital MP3s right. or whatever. You yeah. know what I mean? But I've given enough money to the to the record label. I feel Don't like justify. I deserve it. Yeah. It's like what's, it's like what's the threshold? What's yeah. the point where it's like okay, you've given us 
enough for this exactly. one piece. Yeah. In the shows, you Download know. it as much as you want. You know, do what do with it <laughs> what you will. I don't know. It's a great conversation, but uh we'll have to continue it another time. Yeah. But let's hear what you have to say. 866-404-CNET is the number to call. Email us your thoughts at the 404 at com or hop on Reddit. Get to our subreddit, reddit.com slash r slash the 404, and talk about it on there. Mm -hmm. All right? Whatever you need to do, we're here for you. Follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. And uh, we'll be back here tomorrow. Mark Lasea going to be on the program, and uh, we'll have a lot of fun with him. Yep. That's going to do it for us today, guys. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Jeff Bacalar. I'm Justin Yu. I'm Ariel Nunez. This has been the 404 Show. High tech, low brow. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in.